Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Happy new moon, everybody. So on this new moon, um, as those who, who know me, who've, who've tuned in a few times, I tend not to give very structured analytical talks about steps or techniques. You know, um, there are these, you know, insights. You, this is how you use your mind in, in, uh, breath meditation, or this is how you dissect the body and body contemplation. Uh, there are times for that. And when we're on uh, uh, retreats, those are definitely the kind of reflections that are offered because we have the time to commit to it. But during the apostatas, during, you know, one-on-one -on -one or group conversations, you're more likely to hear me talk about things which are of a more overarching uh, nature, you know, that which feeds into our daily life practice, because this is, this is where we find ourselves in the midst of daily life. None of us are on retreat at just this moment. So we're, we're amidst other activities, other responsibilities, but we've come to understand that Dhamma is still arising all the time and that our practice is not just on the cushion uh, but it encompasses finding a more skillful way to live at all times and so tonight uh, i'd like to talk about uh, something that's very essential to buddhism and you've heard me talk on the topic of faith in the past and this is right up there with faith as uh, an extremely important quality and it is the quality of panya or wisdom and so I'll start off with a question. So what is wisdom? Uh, I'll ask you to, to just think about what comes to mind. And if you've been practicing for a little while or you've heard some of the Buddha's teachings, um, you've probably heard the word wisdom so many times that you, you might be kind of unclear about it. Because it's, it's this funny thing is before we, before we come into practice, yeah, we hear the word wisdom so rarely that we, we know exactly what it's referring to. You know, it's, you know, it's something special and rare. When we come into the Buddhist practice, the Buddha is talking about wisdom all the time. It's one of the basic faculties of minds that needs to be developed for our practice and our uh, pursuit of the spiritual life to be successful. And so he refers to it, he refers to conditions which support wisdom, he refers to what wisdom looks like and how to find it in the world, how to grow it within ourselves. And very quickly, it starts to become diluted. So I thought tonight, let's, let's ask the question, what is wisdom? You know, how do we become wise? How do we find wisdom in the world? And how do we draw close to it? Because again, it's extraordinarily important. Wisdom is one of the perfections. And it's said that the Buddha had to perfect wisdom in order to become a Buddha. Wisdom is one of the five faculties and the five powers. So the essential qualities of our heart and minds that need to be developed for the path to be successful. And once they're developed are indispensable in um, allowing us to walk the, the spiritual path. And furthermore, as I said, wisdom is in the special category of two dhammas, which are um, above all others in consequence. Uh, the Buddha talked about faith followers and dhamma followers those who have strong faith will see virtue, will see wisdom, will see uh, enlightenment in people and will draw close to those people and will emulate those people 
and will develop confidence that enlightenment is possible. Uh, but there are those who have wisdom, you know, have the seed of wisdom, and they hear what resonates as truth in the Buddhist teachings, in the Dhamma, in the teachings of wise people, and they see it to be truth. And so, whereas they might not necessarily draw close to any particular teacher, they will know when they have heard something that was, was clear and present and wise. And so they naturally draw close to the Dhamma. And so you have one with the faculty of faith and one with the faculty of wisdom. And these, these people, even if they're lacking the opposite quality, will attain to the Dhamma, will attain to uh, stream entry eventually once they get both faculties in balance. But even with just one of these, they will be able to begin moving in the right direction. So wisdom is something which, if we don't have it, then we could, uh, as the Buddha said, we could be in the company of a wise and enlightened person for our entire life. And yet we would never acquire any of the qualities that make them wise and enlightened. Um, but if we do have wisdom, then we could be around that person for just a very short time. And we might be able to ascertain what those qualities are and how to grow in them. And what is it? What is wisdom? And I have, I have the advantage. You're kind of on the spot. So I've had much of the last few days pondering this. And it occurred to me today, what if I, uh, what if I put out you know, what the, the reflection was going to be ahead of time? Would you have some time to think for yourself? What is wisdom? What do I think wisdom is? Who do I think is wise? Uh, so instead, you'll be able to reflect on it walking away. And hopefully something here will resonate with you and get you, get you thinking like, where does this show up in my life? How, how could I apply myself to cultivate it? But now before we come to practice, there is wisdom, yeah? But wisdom is a rare thing in the world and it's rarely spoken about, which in one respect is, is a shame because it's incredibly important. Uh, I think what we, what we associate with wisdom is you know, people, um, probably older people, probably more experienced people, um, but a certain quality of person who we recognize as reflective, we recognize as calmed, we recognize as um, somebody who could give good advice or who could consider a situation and see the nature of the situation uh, very clearly. And so it shouldn't be uh, uh, that much a surprise that the, the religions of the world, the spiritual traditions tend to be the place where the, the idea of wisdom is most prevalent. And when we're looking for advice or we're looking for wisdom, often we'll, we'll go to one of, these, one of these venues. We'll go to a, to a church or a mosque or a synagogue. We'll go to a temple or to a monastery. And we'll, we'll try to find somebody who, who seems to be considering things at a, a deeper level. But also in the world, um, we have teachers, we have counselors. We have therapists, you know, and we have mentors. We recognize that there is something that is acquired as life goes on that begins to develop uh, a certain savviness, a certain uh, quality of detachment uh, and an ability to see the big picture. This is, this, is, this is something that is done, but then again, it's also a characteristic of, of the mind. You know, it's a characteristic of all minds. We're all capable of wisdom. And yet not everybody exercises it. Not everybody has strong wisdom. It's uh, by, by psychologists, it's said to develop a lot in our early years. And then uh, much, much less as time goes on, which seems to contradict 
the 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 usual uh, belief and wisdom is that you know there are some people who are just wise no matter what their age is but we tend to look to to older people to people who've been in our profession for a long time and to people who um, have been on the earth for a long time to find wisdom <clears throat> but actually the time when it's growing the most is is earlier in our lives and I wondered why that was and well, what's the time in our life when things change the most rapidly? And that would, that would actually be, you know, like our teenage years, uh, early, early 20s, perhaps. This is a time when we're, we're changing our house, we're changing our occupation, we're, we're changing our, our social circles, everything's changing. As it turns out, um, we don't get wiser simply by growing old. We seem to grow wiser through having a variety of experiences. And so um, I, was, I was reflecting, there's, there's a discord and uh, Reed was actually uh, um, showing up in the discord and there's this, this long ongoing, um, there'll be these conversations that happen and it'll be about this topic or that topic. And you'll have new people show up and they're very hotly, fiercely debating about some aspect of that topic. And then you'll have somebody like Reed who's been around for a while <laughs> and you'll see his name pop up in the chat much more infrequently. And isn't it the case that after somebody has been around for a while, they're not there jumping in immediately going toe to toe and all these philosophical issues, but they tend to pause and they tend to listen more and they tend to reflect. And I think this is a hint, you know, as we get more experienced, we tend to slow down our, our tendency or capacity to jump to conclusions. And we tend to start to observe why? Because we've made some missteps. Uh, we've put our foot in our mouth. We've had an experience here, an experience there that has given us an appreciation for that there's a deeper level to things. And if we can penetrate to that deeper level, we'll, we'll know better what's, what's going on, what's being said, what is the real heart of the matter. So we're kind of as as we tend to do, spiraling closer to a working definition. You know, it's something, something that develops within us uh, as we have a variety of experiences. And you know, uh, in the commentaries, it's 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 said quite simply that again, you're you even in the Buddhist tradition, you're not you're not likely to find like a, a very clinical definition of what wisdom is, but it says simply that wisdom is that which produces light and light being synonymous for understanding. So it's, it's a faculty that understands, it's a faculty that, that penetrates, that illuminates uh, the situation before us. But it's, it's not just simply, in a, it's not, like it's not cleverness, it's not intelligence. It's not simply being able to arrive at knowledge um, through quick thinking because wisdom uh, has requisite uh, uh, steps or conditions. And this is useful for us. Once we start reflecting on it, we're just like, I'm not simply stuck with the amount of wisdom that I, I had when I was born. As we said, it tends to it tends to grow in a conventional sense as we get older and get more experienced. But at the at the spiritual level, it's supported by things that we do and the way that we approach the world. And so this can be cultivated and developed. So what supports wisdom? Well, so what supports understanding? And as we said, you know, as we have had more experiences, we tend to not jump to conclusions so quickly. So say being calm and not giving in to greed, hatred, and delusion would be a supportive condition for seeing things clearly. And um, in the commentaries, it said that uh, balancing the other faculties, that being faith, energy, mindfulness, and concentration, 
bringing those into balance would be a good way of maximizing uh, our use of the wisdom faculty. Yeah. And, and this, is, this is something we can see in the world. You know, those people that we come to think of as wise, that we tend to, to think I could go to them with my problem and they'll be able to give me good advice. They listen more. They're, they're more calm. They, they don't judge us as much. They just hear us out. Uh, the factor of balance is also particularly important because in order to be wise, we're going to have to be able to look at both pleasant and unpleasant things equally. Uh, it's something very similar to the characteristic of equanimity within wisdom. But as equanimity is the ability to maintain balance, whether we're presented with pleasant or unpleasant, wisdom is our capacity to understand a situation regardless uh, of those things. This is so as, as if we think of who we consider to be wise, we probably also know that this person is in tune with deeper aspects of the human condition. The people who are bringing their problems to the wise person to, to try to get advice are bringing problems. <laughs> Nobody goes to the wise person and says, hey, I, I, just, I, I just won the lottery or I just made a, a delicious casserole. What am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> Nobody goes visit, visits the wise person when something goes right. They tend to go when they've, they're, they're stuck with a problem that they can't see the answer to. Yeah. So our wisdom is supported by um, our ability to hold pleasure and pain, success and failure, uh, gain and loss in a balanced way. Yeah. To see, uh, see past these things. And again, greed, hatred and delusion are the five hindrances. All of the, our snap decisions impede this. Yeah, they take us down a route of trying to get what we want or trying to get away from what we don't want. If we can um, zoom out from that or restrain that or tolerate that long enough to see past it, then wisdom has a chance to, to shine light on the situation. Yeah. Because we have this capacity but it can, be, it can be occluded just in the same way as the hindrances are said to um, occlude the mind, to darken the mind, to distract the mind. Uh, these are the things that prevent us from seeing what's really there. Another quality uh, the Buddha points to is very important for the development of wisdom is questioning. And it is, so, so I started out with the question, what is wisdom? Because in some ways, what, <laughs> what we find at, as our experience in, in the path develops, as our wisdom develops, as we have more experiences, what we find is having questions is more important than having answers. At first, we go to our teachers and we're like, uh, so what about this? And what about this? And why this? Why this? Why this? We want to get answers. You know, how do I do this? Where do I do this? You know, what works best? And we just we just keep asking. We're like we want to get we want to get answers. As though um, once we get enough answers, we'll be full and we'll be happy. And that's just left over from our approach to life. Yeah, in general, we we think if we get enough knowledge, then we're set. You know, it'll be like having eaten a, a big and nutritious meal. We'll be, we'll be able to get through the day, no problem. As our wisdom develops, we start to realize it's, it's not so much just having knowledge uh, or the, the new people who show up and kind of have these, these, these debates about various topics um, would be doing much better. But at the end of the day, there is an end of the day. And as the years go by, there is the fact that the years are going by. And what we see over time is that over time, <laughs> certain people stick around <laughs> and certain people burn brightly <laughs> and then go out, you know, go off and do something else that's more interesting and engaging. So the ability to question, the ability to reflect, the ability to inquire, 
is very important for the growth of wisdom, for the stabilization of our ability to see things as they are. And as it grows, um, so do we. You know, we grow in our ability to value the question more than the answer. Because we see that the stronger our ability to reflect and to consider and to not jump to conclusions is, the more likely we are to get to the, to, to the very core of what we're being presented with. Another supportive condition for wisdom is to associate with wise people. And this is where we see um, wisdom being mentioned a lot in the suttas by the Buddha and his disciples is simply pointing out, like, if you want to become wise, don't hang around with fools. <laughs> They're gonna be telling you things that don't match reality. They're gonna be encouraging you to do things that are not in your best interest. And you're just not going to hear things that really support you in growing and reflecting and being calm. You'll hear all the opposite. But now you can draw close to somebody who listens more than talks, who reflects more than uh, jumps to conclusions or holds on to a standpoint. And that sort of person will encourage you to do the exact same thing. And therefore, you're both gonna be sitting there in a state of you know, not jumping to conclusions, not knowing necessarily, questioning, wondering, uh, reflecting. And that would be a good state. And the more people who do that, the, the better, the calmer a society, right? And that's maybe why it's talked about um, so little in average society, is it is quite rare. And when somebody starts to value wisdom over knowledge or acquisition or fame, they tend to just kind of float off to the, to the side of society because they're not pursuing these temporary goals. They're pursuing something which is more lasting. And it's, it's strange that, that valuing the question um, rather than arriving at the answer is actually more lasting because you can question a lot more than you can hold on to the answers that you have found. And we get good at inquiring and reflecting you're likely to do that for the rest of your life. Yeah. And then you really do get wiser. Uh, so to, to, to draw close to those who are wise. And in, in this way, um, even if we can't find wise people in our immediate vicinity, then simply to hear wise teachings. And this is what I said, the, the person who has a certain level of wisdom already upon hearing the Dhamma will immediately uh, get it, you know, will penetrate to, to the heart of the matter and say, there's something extraordinarily true and resonant about this. And even if they hear nothing else for the rest of their life, the, the fact that they're now no longer ignorant, that there is truth, that truth can be known, uh, will lead them towards the path of Dhamma. So these are our basic things that can support uh, our growth and wisdom. Basic things that we can we start to cultivate. So reflect more, ask more questions, uh, calm down. Yeah, if you if you can't see the answer to a problem, then you know step back into a place of, well, let's just relax. Let's, let's you know, settle a bit, compose the mind, balance the faculties. And, and let's see if with a clear mind, it's, it's easier to get to the core of what's going on. But then what's going on, recognizing it's going to be a mix of, of pleasure and pain, of success and failure, you know, because that's what human life is. Not resisting the reality, but just saying, what is the reality? Just, just, Tell me, tell me what it is, and I can work with that. And uh, any, any discussion of wisdom in the Buddhist context wouldn't be complete without acknowledging that there's, there's said to be two kinds of, of wisdom. Though it is the same wisdom faculty, when we look at the product of our calm, uh, sincere investigation, you know, penetration into the nature of reality, we'll get two kinds of products depending on what we're applying our wisdom to. 
if we apply our wisdom to conventional problems, those things which are a matter of time and place and perspective, things which affect us in daily life, then we will develop conventional wisdom. And there's, there, I mean, there, there's no limit to the, to the number of uh, pieces of conventional wisdom and, and folk wisdom, as it's called, that float around. And, you know, they, they're, they're not untrue. They're not necessarily true in all places at all times, but it's, they're, they're true in a basic sense. Um, like, you know, uh, you, bec- you uh, say you, you ha- uh, at one point you go to cross a street and a car is zipping, zipping by and it almost hits you. You know, you've had an experience which developed your, your wisdom that says roads are sometimes dangerous. And so, you know, you begin to, 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 to tell children, to tell your children, your grandchildren, look both ways before you cross the street. Why? Well, because one time you didn't and it almost, almost turned out bad. But even if with a lot of wisdom, you heard that just once, you might go out to the road and you might be like, yeah, I guess it would be possible that if I were not to look both ways that a car could be coming. That seems, that seems kind of wise. It seems kind of uh, intelligent even. So maybe I will look both ways before I cross the street. And it's funny, at 40 years old, I, you know, I still just, just like I'm a little kid, you know, you know, crossing the street to get on the bus to, to kindergarten, I'll, I'll, look, I'll stop at the street and I'll look both ways. Why? Because it's so easy not to. But I've just, I've just learned that no matter what I'm doing and how intent I am on doing it, that stop is very important. Stop. What's the wise course here? Make sure there's no car coming. Okay, there's no car coming. Now I could go back to what I was doing. And that's just this conventional wisdom, yeah? And the thing about conventional wisdom is, you know, even if we have a tiny bit of this wisdom faculty, we'll, we'll develop a sort of intuition about um, what works for us and what doesn't, yeah? So we all have things that uh, we're, we've developed a sort of understanding, like this is the way that we should do. Uh, because we've, we've gotten to the point where we're old enough to hear this, this Dhamma talk, yeah? We've survived, natural selection has worked. We've survived this far. Um, so there must be some wisdom operating in the conventional sense, yeah? To help us avoid danger and to help us move towards um, pleasant and useful experiences. But now when we're presented with um, things that are not subject to time and place, that are not simply a matter of perspective, then we have the opportunity for um, Dhamma wisdom or uh, super mundane wisdom to arise. And this is wisdom which transcends the, 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 the circumstances of our life. This is a wisdom which um, developed and made strong will help us even if we're in um, incredibly different circumstances. In Buddhist cosmology, it said that we're, we're um, you know, if there's still craving and identification in the mind, we will be, we will be reborn over and over again, the qualities of the mind will be, will take another birth in another form and another form. Is it funny that have you, if you've developed a certain kind of wisdom, that faculty becomes strong. And the kind of wisdom that is, is useful in any time and place is like, if you're wise about um, success and failure, if you're wise about gain and loss, if you're wise about pleasure and pain, then you, you take yourself from this situation and now jump into the situation of somebody who's in a different window on the little chat. And you, then it's like, oh, wow. Even if I was in this, their situation, that wisdom would still help me figure out what to do. And that's, that's an amazing thing because you know, our memories start to fade, our, our eyesight, our hearing, our sense of touch and smell start to fade but that wisdom can remain strong, yeah? Uh, The ability to uh, penetrate uh, reality as it is, a reality that goes beyond merely um, getting across the street without getting hit by a car, 
but getting through life without being miserable. Yeah? And that's a kind of wisdom that you know, supersedes an individual life and even supersedes the, the idea of life in, in general. Yeah? As, yeah, as we begin to apply our wisdom to the fundamental realities, again, which are more visible if we're practicing with energy, mindfulness, and concentration, we're faithfully um, attending to these things and drawing close to them, then we will begin to, to understand aspects of why we do what we do. And um, more importantly, why we're doing it in a way that doesn't work. Because that's why we suffer. We're trying to get results in the wrong way. Um, we, we're not seeing things as they really are. So with wisdom, we can begin to penetrate to uh, the way things really are. And again, that'll be a mix of pleasure and pain, a mix of success and failure, enough of a mix, an almost perfect mix, that we begin to, um, to detach from the craving, the clinging and identification that have dragged us into all of the problems that we find ourselves in. The clinging, the craving, the identification, those were the reason we got into problems in the first place, the reason we get into all of our problems. Yeah. So that this, this super mundane wisdom only arises when it's applied to the right topics. And again, being around people uh, who are wise or being around people, uh, being around Dhamma teachings is a quality for this kind of wisdom to arise. If we, we already had the perfection of wisdom, like the Bodhisattva before he became the Buddha, then we would probably be able to discern what things in life are most important to attend to. Um, but I mean, to give us the benefit of the doubt, most of us are not a, a Buddha in training, yeah? Most of us are just, you know, we're just, we're just trying to get by. You know, we're just doing the best that we can. And so having had a Buddha arise and having had a teaching passed along and having a vast network of practitioners who are investigating this teaching gives us a framework for where to look to find these things that will um, create uh, this super mundane, this Dhamma wisdom that will allow us to undercut all of our problems, undercut all of our suffering, get out of our suffering, get out of the patterns of doing things in a, in a, in a foolish way, in an unclear way, in a way that doesn't work. And finding the ways of being that do work, which again, we get to a certain age Natural selection has said that we have found a number of things that work. To kind of bring it full circle, I, I, we've also met people who've gotten old and have not gotten wise, yeah? And I think why we see that, that uh, a certain age, you know, maybe 12 to 25 is when we develop our most, uh, the most wisdom is because we're, we haven't yet fallen into patterns. Yeah, and as we get older and we get more adults, doesn't it seem like time is passing so much quicker? Yeah, whole decades go by and we're like, oh, wow, huh. uh, it's gone. Yeah, but was that because we stopped experiencing new things? We stopped putting ourselves in new situations. We got acclimated to the same circumstances. Yeah, and that's not a good, um, a good support for the growth of wisdom, actually to be in the same predictable circumstances, making the same habitual decisions, just because it's safe or because it's comfortable. Uh, if we really want to grow in wisdom and a wisdom that will uh, keep us safe and free from suffering, and now and in any future births, then we're gonna have to be willing to experience something new. You know, go, go out there and shake things up and leave our habits. Yeah, um, see each situation as a new opportunity to see things more deeply, look past what we've already figured out, our conventional wisdoms and say, what's, well, what's more essential here? What's more true here? 
What's the deeper reality to get to here? All right. So there's much to do about the topic of panya, of wisdom, and how it shows up in the Buddhist teaching. And as I said, you didn't know it was coming, so you didn't get to think about it ahead of time, but now you've heard the talk. So think, I encourage you to think to yourself. Don't just take what I said and be like, oh yeah, that's, that sounds about right. And that matches with the commentary. But consider, you know, what is wisdom? Who is wise? Am I wise? Am I growing in wisdom? Do I want to? And if I want to, how should I go about it? So this I offer you tonight on the Aposta. May you uh, grow in faith and wisdom and may you attain your heart's desire. Mm -hmm. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.